If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump. We're bringing Mind it. Mind Pump. For about 26 minutes, uh, we do some bullshit and we talk about uh, these genetic freaks that we see all over social media, like Brad Castleberry. Mm. He breaks world records. Every day. Every single day, apparently. Yeah, me too. Yeah. We talk about the genetic uh, variances between individuals. Like, do super, super smart people feel like they're just walking around a world full of idiots? Yeah. Uh, we talk a they're lot about bored. that. We talk about genetic engineering and what we would do if we had the ability to engineer our genetics. Uh, we would like Justin's calves, for example. Mm. We talk about Justin's big meeting. We can't talk too much about it because it's a secret, but it is big. Super secret. And it is a meeting. Yeah. Then we talk <laughs> it's about- big. It's a meeting. Then we talk about uh, Adam's recipe for mint chocolate chip pancakes. Uh, you should mention that that recipe, the for sure recipe, because I just kind of blurted out what I thought it was, is on the Organifi website and then you go to their blogs so oh and, their- and by the way if you get any of their products uh, just type in the code mind pump and you'll get a massive discount that's mind pump no space and then we talk about me and my family's annual tomato canning uh thing that we do every year it's pretty awesome it's a great tradition and i'm not giving sauce to anybody because nobody helped me fuck oh, everyone i'm upset with you exactly Hater. uh then we get into the questions Somebody asked us if we watched the CrossFit Games and what we thought about the CrossFit Games. And do we think those people are the fittest people in the world? No. I brought out the popcorn. (laughs) Then we get into uh, what we would take if we could only take three supplements or less. Which ones would we choose? Uh, Then we answer the question, how we built so much confidence. Because, you know, we walk around with this We know everything. Yeah, this aura of invincibility. How did we get it? Is it cocky or is it confident? Probably both. Then finally, the final question is we answer the question, uh, what is the dumbest piece of fitness equipment that we've ever purchased? Also, in this month, our favorite promotion, probably ever, get free access to our private forum. And the private forum is awesome, by the way. We have, and going up in price after this month. It will be going up in price, but it's free right now if you enroll in any of our MAPS programs or bundles, the private forum consists of personal trainers, fitness enthusiasts, competitors, and also myself, Adam and Justin. We're on there every single day. Normally, you have to pay separately for that. That's right. It's $87 you'll be saving. It's free. All you do is enroll in any MAPS program or in any of our bundles, including our uh, awesome bundle, the one year's worth of exercise programming, MAPS Super Bundle, which contains pretty much everything you need to get awesome. And it's T-shirt time. Yeah. T-shirt. Oh, by the way, it's at mindpumpmedia.com. Almost forgot to give the website out. Sorry about that, Doug. Yeah, no problem. So we had 17 reviews this last week. Not hey, bad. that's that's good. Yeah, it's and up. giving away five shirts. Yeah. So we have the winners, Optimal Warrior, Keto Car, Dusty Young, Okolo 007, and Salmon of Doubt. All of you <laughs> Some of these didn't games. quite spawn this year. <laughs> yeah. All of you yeah. are winners. So send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com, your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. Brad Castleberry breaks world records every day. World yeah. records, motherfucker. That's what he says. <laughs> <laughs> every day. Every day he breaks world oh, records. Every day, good. Bro, what if he is that strong? I know everybody well, says fake weights, but, in something? but he's at 24 hour fitness every day doing these weights with a bunch of people why around him. Do don't you, power lifting don't you think someone would be able to film him bringing fake weights in and stuff? I I agree. So I, I think yeah. I think he might legit be that strong. Well, I did see be. I did see a guy break down like right. They did a YouTube on him. And they showed like how some of his videos are photoshopped, right, or edited, and they edited more weights on the video, but. No matter what, I, I think he's still doing like five plates on things. Like it's, he's, it's not like he's not doing any of it. It's not like he's going like he's really doing like one forty five and he's putting twelve plates on there. I think, I think he's doing like nine and then he puts ten on there. Here's why I think the guy's phenomenal because some of the stuff you can't Photoshop. Like, have you seen him sprint? Right and, and jump, jump out of the pool. and do a kick flip on a fucking skateboard. Right, he's kind of. A freak. He is. You could tell by his... Honestly, when you look and at his... And he's hella flexible. If there's a guy, if there's yeah. a guy that could do that, his he has the build. 
when you look at his stature, like yeah. if there's somebody who's lifting that kind he's of built weight, like a video game. Yeah, no, he really is. Like his his waist and his shoulders are just broad, super wide, like super wide. He looks like he was built to lift a lot of fucking weight. It's, he looks like a video game avatar. Oh, like if you yeah. have three choices, you can pick the elf, <laughs> you can pick the wizard, or I you can pick the warrior. Powers, please. Yeah, I'll take the warrior, please. And it's yeah. Brad. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's funny that Did you see that. It's Bradley funny that Joe Martin D's one. calling him out though. Of all so, people, <laughs> Bradley Martin did like it was like 405 or something. He, like he went from a squat down into Indian uh, position yeah. with 405. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. Bradley Martin's a freak too. I mean, he's a now he has like I believe a uh, powerlifting or Olympic lifting background. I think he did that for does he really many years before that. There's some crazy people out there. There's this one dude I follow. What's his name? Armenian Strength. Oh, dude. that guy's a fucking. I forgot about that. He's a, he's a track athlete in college, or I don't know if he's still in there or not. But there's this kid, and he's from- muscular. He's not massive, but he's like he's strong, like silly strong. You yeah. know what I mean? Where you, like have you seen this? Yeah. The little the little black kid that's from either South Africa or from Jamaica. One or the other. I can't remember. Which. Have you seen him? No. What does he and do? He looks like old. It's like an old gym, shitty ass weights. Oh, where they're lifting he's, like he's, cement blocks and shit. No, no, no. I mean, yeah, he he's in some of those videos, but some of his squat videos and some of the weight that he's pushing and pulling is just insane. There's a couple. There's like four or five guys that I follow that. What do, people don't realize is that people like this. Like who we're talking about, if they never lifted weights, they're still strong, <laughs> strong as fuck. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right, like right. I bet you these guys first went to the gym. Like I bet you Castleberry's like, oh, I'm gonna try working out. And his yeah. buddy's like, okay, here's how you do a Let's squat. Try this. And he's like, all right. And he's like, three fifteen. He's like, cool. This is well, my first time. Remember when we were hanging out with Ben, right? Ben Pack. He said the first time he ever got under the bar, he squatted like four plates. Yeah, like four like or the five. first yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. The first time he ever squatted was like four hundred five, and I think Ooh, this, it, this works. Yeah, yeah, and I th- and I think he said like four ninety five or something for his first first time ever, first time ever deadlifting and squatting. So you know what's like cool? this is crazy. So you yeah, know what's crazy. cool about this when I think about this, like the differences in uh, genetic ability, how crazy they can be, how dramatic they can be, and how hard I work to try and be strong or whatever. <laughs> how right? Yeah. Now think about it this way: there's got to be that variance and it's, the reason why it's cool with physical feats is because it's very objective and clear you can lift this much he can lift that much it's very clear right but think about this now think about the genetic variances with uh with your mental ability like think about geniuses like how do they see the world and oh, think of things same thing to me could I mean, you imagine being like one of those people and just you'd be surrounded by idiots right all away. the time? But everybody yeah. would be so dumb. Like, well, this is like, oh, this is why I it's mean, like that kid that's bored at school all the time, you know, he's just like, ah, pfft. well, I feel so like easy. it's the reason why sometimes these guys come off as kind of an asshole because they just feel like everybody is so stupid. You mm-hmm. know, it's like they're, it's like or they're, they're aloof. They come across aloof. Right. They're just like, they're, they're playing a game at a whole nother level than everybody else. It's just not even fun for them to communicate with everybody else. It's just like, ugh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stuff. Uh, well, so beneath me. Well, yeah. and, and we yeah. call them. And it's true though. We call them weird. We call them eccentric. We call them nerds. But I think they're so smart that they just don't care about the same shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, absolutely. Like yeah. I don't. I don't want to comb my hair. Who cares? I'm trying. I'm. I'm like contemplating the nature of the universe. Like, yeah. Who gives a shit about my hair? And we're like, you're a fucking I just nerd. Found a god particle, man. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What have because, you done? God, I wish you could just like. Well, when you when you use the analogy of comparing it to like really strong genetically gifted people or like athletes that are genetically gifted, when you think about that, like imagine a you know pro NFL player, like he's not going to have fun playing football with a bunch of Pop Warner kids, like you know what I'm saying like he's not a gonna, bunch of regular people, yeah, like a bunch of regular, <laughs> like that's not fun for him, like that's not he's not going to do that, like it's just. You don't want to do that. And that, I think that's how somebody who's like super intelligent probably feels having like a normal conversation. So take it to the mm. next level. Uh, they now have, we, we have the technology. They all turn into hackers. We have the technology to edit uh, human genes now. So With CRISPR? Yeah. yeah. So that's, what they're, what do they call it that, shit. by the way? It sounds I don't like know. A, yeah. sounds like a chip. It sounds yummy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I got some CRISPR yeah, going crispy. on. Mm. Explain this to me. I'm so. Lost. There's this technology that, they, that they've that they been using, and they've used it on animals, but now they can do it on humans, where they can edit genes. So the reason, the reason why they're using it on, or, or going to use it on human embryos, or they're selling people to why they want to use it on human embryos, is to eliminate genetic uh, diseases. Hmm. So they'll go in, 
and they'll use this technology and say, okay, your child is not going to have mm-hmm. all these potential genetic issues. And that's how they're going to sell it. But I know for a fact it's going to go the next level. Yeah, people are going to want certain heights and certain attributes. Come on, dude. We're going to we're going to create a race of yeah. like a bunch of like Stephen Hawking smart, Brad Castleberry built, Brad you know, Pitt looking. Yeah, like yeah. just oh. Well, that, where I'm I, so perfect. Where I trip out, and who, then we're all going to look like idiots. Yeah, who My was crooked nose? And who was here teeth. in the studio just recently where we were all having this conversation? Oh, it was Josh Trent. And I was speculating that what if th- this is the natural progression and this is what we're su- where we're supposed to and the rest of us that are resisting it are are just silly. You know, like this is that's what we're, we are like. We are supposed to evolve to this. Like, why wouldn't you want to download a better program for yourself? Like if you could download, you know, better calves, like why would I not do that? Like fucking download that shit. <laughs> if I could work less at them, dude, I, could, I put four days a week in them and they fucking look terrible. Like <laughs> some bullshit. Like if I could put some software on them, dude. Just edit some jeans in there. Yeah, edit some oh. jeans in there. It'd be awesome. Yeah. And, you know, like, hey, hey, and hey, fuck you for judging yeah. me for wanting to do that. You know like, what I'm saying? Hey, hey, Justin, let me download your program for calves god yeah, damn it <laughs> yeah i don't like I'll the look, one I'm, hook you up. i don't like the one i was born with but i mean really i had to work for these i'll though. give you my tanning ability let's do a trade all right you know that's not fair but so what about this right so let's say you go in with a girl you're like okay this is a girl i want to be with we both want to have a child together and the scientists are like okay we're going to take your genes we're going to take her genes and we're going to look at the best potentials that you guys have together. Mm-hmm. Like, what if that still sucks? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> what if they're like, well. <laughs> then you're like, ah, you know. Like, um, here's the best we could do with I what you guys are. I got to go find somebody else. Yeah, with what you guys are giving us. Yeah. So then what's the next level that there is no, like, they'll take like a super base scaffolding of your genes and then just make up a bunch of shit. Like, okay, <laughs> we're going to give your son, your future son. The ability to hold his breath like a whale. So we're gonna use whale. We're gonna we, use we whale. some gorilla in Jeans. there. Yeah, some gorilla saying. strength. Yeah, what you're, the, you're pathetic and weak. What's gonna uh, happen? We need to hook you up. What yeah. is gonna happen? Yeah. Well, well, well I, yeah. I did you guys see? Uh, it's gonna get weird. Either I know Sal probably did. Justin, did you see that there was the uh, Hall of Flame? The Hall of Flame. Uh, the, the, the Hall of Flavors. The Hall. The Hall of Flavors. <laughs> well, the Hall of Fame. Uh, Adam the Schaefer, our uh, keynote uh, speaker at the yeah. Hall of Flavors, <laughs> is <laughs> giving out the awards this year. <laughs> did you see? Did you see uh, Ladanian Thomason get uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame? Did you watch? I that? didn't watch no, it. You didn't watch that. You missed that too. Sorry. Yeah. God, you, you were working. I know. I, yeah, I was working. Sorry. He gave. A great speech. He gave a great. He did. He actually gave a really good, good speech. Oh, you have saw that? No, I didn't see it. Fuck. Get out of here! I guy. knew not to trust <laughs> you immediately. <laughs> he doesn't even know who yeah. that is, bro. Yeah. He's obviously an athlete. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> obviously an athlete. <laughs> well, you know what sport? Hold on. What was Get, it? Guess wait, the sport. Wait, hold yeah, on. I wasn't paying attention. Thomason. Come on, that's fucking basketball. <laughs> Come on, dude. That's, oh. that's bas- he San- plays basketball on the side, but no, it's not that. Bro, no. On the side, his on sport, the weekends. His guys- sport is football. Uh, did you, okay. did you guys see uh, Usain Bolt run his last run? He lost, huh? He did lose. Yeah. To a kid? Yeah, a guy's like 20, 21 or 22 now, years old. Now, is it because Usain... So, and he retired right after he lost? Uh, I think he's going he's like to. going to? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't what a want... horrible way to retire. I know. Why are you going to go out like that? Well, I think they thought he was still going to win this one. They Did, said uh, if he, they figured if he could run it under 9-9, I think is what I heard them say. That... Now, is he slower? Is that why the yeah. other kid won? Or is yeah, it because... yeah, yeah, yeah. He's oh, slower. Okay. He's, so I that mean... kid didn't run as fast as wow. Usain did when he was yeah. fast. Yeah, they finally are catching up to his 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 speeds. Man, just just a few they years were... and it already like went. <laughs> I was walking on the treadmill when... They were do they're before the race, and so I got to watch all the the lead up. Start running along with them. Oh, I tell you what, <laughs> I'm, sure. there, I'm not gonna lie. There was a part of me that almost wanted to run, I, and I, you know me, I don't run. But I looked yeah. at Katrina, and I was like, "Do you feel like you, you want to run right now? Just, I kind of want to run right now." <laughs> only, oh, it's only eighty, or what is it? What is it? Uh, f- uh, not forty. How many? What does he run? He runs the. Is he four hundred meters? What does he run? I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. Yeah. It's like not very far. Nice. It's not like, yeah. it's it's not like it's miles. A sprint. Yeah, I know he sprints. Yeah, it's not miles. Yeah. So I'm like, I could do that. I could yeah. run 400 meters. It just doesn't. <laughs> fe- you know, it's funny about like as I get older, I'm realizing because I, you know, I was playing with the kids the other day, and I'm like running and stuff, and I, I never really run and do shit like that. I just feel like fuck, I suck. Mm. Like this is not. This doesn't feel it's good. Not for you. Doesn't feel comfortable. Yeah. I think I need to start running more. <laughs> yeah. You know wanna, what I'm saying? I want to watch you run. Huh? I want to watch you I've run never too. Seen it before. You, I feel intimidated. The way you said that, though, I feel weird now. <laughs> You I don't said, know. I'm just like, starting to You said that with a weird voice. I want to sit in a chair I want to watch, watch you run. I want to watch you run. 
boy. Feel, feels really weird. Yeah. And did you did you ever go through, it will enter you to the Hall of Flamers? Did you ever go through a phase <laughs> where you ran? Like right. did you ever go through a phase where you ran? When I was doing uh jujitsu, I would um part of my workouts on the side where I would do I would run like five miles, ten miles, stuff like that. But oh, was, okay. Yeah, and then there was a short period of time where I was doing uphill sprints, uh just for fun, but I was never no, I usually stand my ground, you know what I mean? So I just fight or flight. Stand I fight my ground. Yeah, I just I stay just in real fight. solid to the ground. Yeah. yeah. By the way, you're an asshole. By the way, <laughs> why? So I let you know you're an asshole when you when you when you fucking pulled me backwards with the band. <laughs> Did you, hey, the best was the very end, which got cut out. You fell like hard. Oh, I fell and oh, he fell. So did you fall on top of me? I did fall on top of you afterwards. You know what? It's uh, it it's, oh, a, it's hilarious. It's a very terrifying feeling. To run backwards <laughs> off balance, <laughs> off balance, because you don't know what's behind you. You just took off, and you're like, "Oh shit!" You, you didn't give me a chance to catch my footing. I think yeah. Taylor said that was the most commented uh, video he had ever of put course. up on the on the page. It was, of course, it was pretty epic. Of course, it was. What sucks about that is you have to sit around in like you don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> oh, it's yes. something going to be terrible. That's right. He always has to get back. It's going to be something terrible. Mm. And I might wait a year. Oh, I don't God. know. I like I like the waiting part more than anything. Mm. Well, we're about to be we're about to spend a couple nights together. Yeah, so I'm wondering. <laughs> you, like, yeah. you guys like staying in the same we're, room? Yeah, yeah, we're trying to save money. So Katrina, I'm gonna do something Katrina horrible got too. one bed. Yeah, one bed, one room. No, she didn't. Yeah, she's like, we're not get, sharing a bed. Yeah, she's like, you guys can sleep head wow. to toe. It's uh-huh. not a big deal. I feel like this is a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. This is gonna be. It's gonna be something so terrible though, Justin. Like. Something like like oh. everyone's gonna be like that's not even funny it's just fucked up like why would you do that to him yeah and I'm gonna laugh it's ah. probably good I'm missing yeah. this one yeah. like like a brick to the face <laughs> something terrible hmm. what, what time you is your meeting guard? Justin yours is at Tuesday at what time nine nine a.m. oh in the morning mm-hmm. that's early nine yeah. well they apparently that's how they roll are yeah. you uh, are you like powerpointing it and everything or what are you doing there'll be powerpoint the but mainly it's just demonstration and um it's conversation so. They just wanted to peer into, um, you know, like my philosophy and, and they want to like a good, they, they want time to, to basically use it and, and play around with so it. So we you, can't, we can't say much, but you have a no. big, you got a big presentation. It's all we can say, right? Yeah. For the yeah, Axon. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for not. <laughs> yeah. We can't yeah, talk, we can't about, talk it. about it. But, but it, it is a big deal and it's, it's, it's exciting. So, yeah. Are, are you, you nervous? Are you nervous? Yeah. Um, you know what? I, I thought I would be, but I'm like. Dude, I know this thing like backwards and forwards and I'm just, I'm excited to just like put it in people's hands and let them try it out and give me feedback and kind of feed off of that. You you have your elevator pitch? Yeah, dude, I got, I got all day. Fuck yeah. yeah. All day. I'm, I'm just like, I'm like overly confident to where (laughs) it's like, I should probably calm down and just try and relax. You know what I mean? You you, you feel fired up? Yeah, yeah, That's the best, dude. I feel fired. That's the best feeling. I've been waiting for this, dude. Like, this is the kind of shit that I live for. That is the best feeling when you, and it's such a difference when you're doing, when you're going into something, because I've experienced both. I don't know if you guys have have done this, but I've experienced both where I'm going to do, I'm about to do an event or do something that's important or whatever, and I'm really nervous and stressed out about it, and I just, I just, perform shit because I feel horrible. Yeah. And I've also been on the other end where I've walked into a situation and I'm literally like, like if it was a battle, I'd be in the, I'd be in the front running head first, you know, ready to Just fucking like the take a sword ah! to the face. Yeah. yeah. Like I've been in both situations. What a difference it makes in how effective you are. Have you guys mm-hmm. ever experienced both of those? Yeah. Either ends of those? Yeah. No, no. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but I'm sure I have for sure. Yeah. I, I felt so. Th- my two examples I can think of is my very first jujitsu tournament. I was so like nervous. So I just was, uh, I was an adult competing. I hadn't competed since I was a kid. Um, I knew people that I, that were going to watch me were going to be there and I didn't want to lose in front of them. And I was just so nervous going into it that I exhausted myself even before the match started and I was terrible I performed terribly mm. and where you just it's like I'm an, like you like afterwards you're like god I totally suck you know what I did and then the other time I can think of where I went into something feeling like incredible was the very first day I ran my first gym as a 19 year old kid walking in knowing that the staff was going to meet their you know meet me for the first time and I was going to give my first all staff meeting and I went in there like 
like a like if like a fucking bat out of hell. Like I went in there like it was on. Yeah. And it was. Yeah. And it was on. I gave that meeting and everybody you was came just, in with the energy. And, oh, I and just felt like yeah. And Sweet. that's how I feel right now for what you know, yeah. me and Adam are about to do. I feel I think I that, feel the same for you guys. Yeah. I feel calm and aggressive at the same time. I think <laughs> I think sports have always uh or sports help train that in me, right? I think mm-hmm. that you know, when you when you when you put the practice in, right? When you practice and you practice at your craft and then it comes game time and you perform the best that you could perform, that's all you can ask for, right? Like you can't I can't expect to uh win every time. You can't expect to beat the other guy. You have no idea how much they prepared or how much better they are than you. I, I think that you you learn to be okay with whatever the outcome is as long as you performed at your best and when you learn to focus on that I think it really it always unfolds nicely right like mm-hmm. it's I, I feel like when I go into like what we're about to go into like Justin's about to go into it's like all the years all the things that we've been doing that's practice you know that's mm-hmm. everything we've been doing is is leading up to moments like this you just got to go do you you know go yeah. do you and do the do the best you you possibly can and I think uh where most people you know get hung up is they get nervous and scared and that they're going to screw up and i think that i you know at one point i don't remember where this happened in my life but i stopped i stopped worrying about that like i think i think after you've had enough embarrassing moments in your life and you realize mm-hmm. well that ain't that big of a deal what's like, interesting what's, yeah i feel like this podcast itself has really helped to kind of like numb a lot of those feelings out for me like you know whether i'm going to screw up or say something wrong or do like i could just i could just sit here and talk, you know, and it's fine. Like I'll, there's, a, there's time enough for me to kind of work my way through it. And, uh, just like you said, with the sports, um, have really kind of prepared me for that as well. Like if I get too hyped, I know ahead of time, like, okay, you know, I feel my energy's up too high to where I'm just going to, I'm going to come in too fast and, and I need to just kind of calm myself and get my heart rate down. And, um, so a lot of that, like, depends on like how I wake up. Uh, am I going to come in? I, I feel like that's probably going to be more of the case is like, I'll, I'll probably be a little bit too hyped to where I'm just going to, okay, dude, chill. Like we're just having a conversation and let's take it from you there. You know what you need to do? You need to try my green pancakes is what you need to do. Okay, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see those? What, 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 what's the, oh, you guys didn't see those? I, I saw it. Oh yeah. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, we made some green waffles, but go ahead. Yeah, no. Yeah. So what, what for, so for I saw son. I saw them on your story. So I made the so I've been going to, since we've signed with Organifi, I've been going through and ch- trying out all their different recipes, right? And mm. I found these mint chocolate chip pancakes. Oh. Fucking bomb! Oh, What's damn. in? What do you? What do you use? What do it's you hardly in? anything. It's really like it's. Uh, and I, I have the the recipes on their blog, so I'm probably gonna screw it up. But I think it's four egg whites, one whole egg, coconut oil for the pan, uh, two scoops of the uh, Organifi protein powder, and then two scoops of the the green uh, the green juice. So, so you which, mix that all up, and then, yeah, and then oh, then like a handful of uh, I think we use like fifteen or twenty chocolate dark chocolate chip pieces, mm-hmm. and the first we did the first batch. Katrina's like, well, let's not do chocolate chips. Maybe it doesn't need chocolate chips. And I'm like, okay, let's just try it without it, and it was okay without it. But because the green juice has that really good mint flavor, oh, it goes the, with the chocolate. Yes. So oh, then, so then I the see. second batch we have the chocolate chips. I'm like, oh no, you have to put a couple chocolate chips in there because the the then it makes these these green mint pancakes with the chocolate chips and you only need a couple in there. You don't even need that many chocolate chips in there. Just enough that every other bite or so you get a little chocolate chip surprise. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to try it, dude. dude. We we made some for my son cuz he we usually sneak like uh we blend up like like spinach or kale or whatever and we try and mix it in with waffle batter because he just he loves waffles and, and you know and he's like super carb head, you know, and so we're like <laughs> we're trying to like infuse like nutrients in there as much as we can. And so yeah, so we did that with the Organifi, the green juice, and we used the powder and then um also added in avocado and um like some flaxseed. Avocado think. inside a waffle. Bro. Really? Bomb. Well, yeah, yeah. Have you had an Gives avocado? It like sh- that texture. Yep. Yeah. Have you had an avocado? Have you had a sh- smoothie with avocado in it? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that. it makes it so smooth. Yeah. I and would, he didn't I even would... use syrup. He didn't want syrup. 
Oh, really? Yeah, just butter. And, and I was like, oh, dude, it's awesome. Because he just, you know, it was just, you know, sweet enough for him. So I have yet to do any of these recipes. I want to try one of those. Lazy, bro. Yeah. Well, nice. you were making uh, tomatoes all weekend. Oh, yeah. I dude. saw that, dude. <laughs> do you guys like that? You guys yeah. get down, huh? Yeah. So it's a. Making some sauce. It is a family. Uh, it's not just a family tradition, it's a cultural thing. But uh, we get together. Why aren't and, you hooking us up? Dude? And because well, you guys weren't there helping, Fuck. so you don't get a goddamn. Oh, you have to help. <laughs> oh, Basically, <I> <laughs> just to get a jar. You can't guy. just That's... be a friend yeah. and, and, have, and get no. some sauce. You can eat over if you want, uh, but right. uh, every well, once a year, I have to be invited. Because you, we once a year we get together and we go buy a shit ton of tomatoes. Then we bring them over, and then there's this whole like. I mean, Henry Ford would be proud. There's this whole like con- like like assembly line. Did you where, guys all wear hair nets? Where we wash the tomatoes. Uh, we cut the tomatoes, we cook them a little bit, then we put them through this machine that spits out the seeds in the skin and it makes the sauce. Then we take the sauce and then we put them in the jars and you put, like my mom puts like a basil leaf and some other stuff in there. We jar them, then we boil the jars, which seals them, and then we store them. So, th- and, and we used to do a lot more, by the way, but my, we did over 400 jars oh, of damn. sauce. Damn, yeah, because it's for the lot. whole year. So and it's a, it's an it's a huge uh, uh like a it's a huge production. It takes you guys two days. It looks like when I was a kid, we used to do it at my grandma's house, and it was my so my grandparents' house, and it was all of her kids, so all my aunts and uncles. Who has so, all the trees? The tomatoes. Yeah, yeah. We oh we go we go we go get them. We go to uh we used to go pick them. So we'd go to the fields and we find fields of tomatoes and we'd ask the farmers if they let us pick them and then we pick them. What? You mm-hmm. just they give them to you for free? No, 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 no. We pay for them, oh. but we get a really good price because we direct go directly there and we'll pick them ourselves. Or now we don't necessarily pick them. Now we buy boxes of them. Oh. Okay, but back then it was my, obviously organic. Yeah, sure. it was my uncle, uh, my two aunts, my mom, and all of our kids. You know, all their kids and all of our kids. So it was like. 50 people at my grandma's house, and we would literally buy, I'm not exaggerating now, pickup trucks of tomatoes, full of <laughs> tomatoes. And we drive them over, and then everybody had a job. So what the kids' jobs were, the kids were uh, the tomato washers. And what we would do is we'd have these huge uh, like buckets, like those big like storage buckets or whatever, and we'd fill them up with water, and we'd have like five of them. And we would transfer them into cleaner and cleaner water. So we'd wash them in this one, wash them in that one, move all the way down. And at the last one, then it was usually the men who would cut them and bring them into the garage. And then the women were doing all the jarring and the smashing and whatever. And then sometimes the kids would also push the tomatoes down into the machine to get the... It's this huge ordeal. Whole assembly line. But my favorite part of it is, first off, fresh sauce. There's nothing like it in the world. And my girlfriend... Loved it also, but she also made the observation that perhaps I have this connection to it. You know what I mean? Because I've been doing it since I was a child. Of mm. course. So that may be why I have such, I love it so much, but we'd make the fresh sauce and no joke, like me and my dad will get a, a mug and we'll drink some sauce. Just like it's, <laughs> just drink, drink, drink some, the sauce. Drink some uh, fucking sauce. You know what it, it reminds me? I dated this girl, this Italian girl that they did the same thing, but with olives. Yeah, that's mm. all of that stuff. Right. So some families get together and they'll draw olives together. Yes, it's like a huge thing. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, yeah. and the olives you have to go through. You have to do something to them though before, because uh, you can't just pick wild olives and jar them up. You have mm. to uh, do something. There's like, a whole process. Yeah, there is. I forget mm-hmm. what it was. What we it pick. Pick, uh, I know. Uh, I know somebody on our some smarty pants on the forum will let me know. Yeah, let us know. <laughs> but then, so the cool thing is, at what we used to do at my grandma's house is while we were doing all this. Uh, my grandma or someone would make fresh pasta. Have you guys ever had fresh pasta? No, so I, I'm yet to. The diff, the, there's a big I've difference. Fresh tortillas. There's a big difference between fresh pasta and pasta. You buy of course. Pasta. So then my grandma would make fresh pasta. So at the end of the sauce making thing, we would have fresh pasta with fresh pasta sauce, and it was fucking heaven, dude. Yeah. I'm getting emotional right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Doug, bring on the saucy bird. Bring on the saucy bird, please. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory-tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk-free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. Our first question is from Shan Trimble. 
Did you guys watch the CrossFit Games? Did I watch the CrossFit? Why fucking, would we do that? Fucking A, I watched the CrossFit him, Games. Let him finish. Uh, yeah, what's your thoughts on it? And do you think they are truly the fittest in the world? And if not, who is? Did either of mm. you guys watch? I watched Two seconds, a little maybe. bit of it. I yeah. was talking to Joy from uh, the Girls Gone Wad podcast because they were there. And she was telling me how awesome it was. But no, I didn't watch it. I've watched them before, though. So I know what I watched like. it. You watched the whole thing? I did. I watched it, and I watched. I was just I was crossfitting it up this weekend. Wow. I watched the uh, the newest uh, fittest in the world video, mm-hmm. and then I also watched the games. Um, what a brilliant tagline they came up with! What's that? The, the fittest f- in the world. That's well, smart marketing. It's very smart marketing, and I I would be willing to bet. Don't or do or, do or debate that okay. they are. I I you know what? I don't know I don't mm. know. There when you talk about well running, like hands down, there's somebody who the guy who won all of it, right? Matt Frazier. There's somebody who can out deadlift him and out squat him 100. percent There's somebody who can out row him in the world 100. percent He's not the best <clears throat> at any one category, but you know if your definition of fittest in the world is the ability to run maybe uh, 14 miles, then throw a softball and climb up a rope and then row across a... Uh, you Did know. they throw a softball in this year? <clears throat> no, not this oh, okay. year. But I, you know what I mean, though, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, yeah, yeah. You know, if that if you are if we are going to do you something, weave a basket, <laughs> yeah, right. we got to give a haircut. You got to do a Rubik's cube uh, real quick, yeah. right? So, I mean, the, the stuff they come up with is, I mean, you can't just be. I, I can't imagine any other athlete. Like I can't imagine the most elite football player, the most elite basketball player, the most elite power lifter, the most elite Olympic lifter, the most elite gymnast. I can't imagine any of those, right, the top of their class, coming to the games and beating any of the CrossFit Games guys and girls at the, at this this so called sport. Uh, and and you it takes strength, it takes endurance and stamina. I. I you know, I don't know. I, I I can't think of an athlete off the top of my head that I would say I think that you know couldn't take them. Although, let's be honest, again, it's specialized, right? Yeah. That's why I, I you can't. I mean, how can you say fittest in the world at what? Yeah. They are definitely the fittest at the world at CrossFit for sure. That's the CrossFit Games. Mm-hmm. But would they be the fittest at the world? Yeah, at, fittest at CrossFit. Yeah, would they be the fittest at the world at you know I don't know arm wrestling, powerlifting, wrestling. long distance running? Rest, rest, I mean, no. Um, the be, you know it's a it's a very smart um, tagline. It's a very smart uh, marketing. But fittest, it's such a it's it's such a speculative thing. It's not objective. Yeah. Um, it's specific to what what you're doing. It's like saying I'm the healthiest man in the world. Like right, healthiest right. at what? Like <laughs> right. you know, yeah. the, you you had the least disease. I mean, what do you you know? What are you talking about? Now, I, I, I think it's uh, I feel phenomenal what they do. I think it's truly phenomenal. I think the caliber of athlete that they have now versus <laughs> ten years ago is is light years. I mean. Mm-hmm. The people now are world class athletes. Oh, yeah. It wasn't like that ten, you know, and, ten years and ago. And what I mean by that is, I feel like they could get in a swim in a pool, run on a track, lift lift a barbell with some of the best. Not the. I don't think they could beat the best in any of those single categories, right? Like if someone is a swimmer, like none of those guys are meet, beating Michael Phelps. None of them, right? None of them are going to outrun Usain Bolt. Do you None think? Do you think they would be even good enough to compete at the collegiate level at those individual events? I don't. No, no, I don't. I don't think, I don't, I don't no. think even at that level. I know. I'm I talking about they, the average person. Yeah, I think what they've done very, very well is they're very good at competing at CrossFit, which is uh, just a combination of different ev- events, and it's not just the combination of events, but it's also being able to do them in succession in a particular order. You know, it's definitely a very specialized skill. I mean, they have to train very specifically to be able to do what they do. But can I endure punishment? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. Well, the the follow up to the question is, you know, if not, then who is? And again, that's I think tough, man. well, I think that like if you're gonna if you're gonna say they're not, you can't say anybody else is, right? That's how I feel, right? If you can't say they are a CrossFit, I don't see anybody beating them at CrossFit for sure. Uh, but do I think they? But you know be what like I mean? A decathlete. At the decathlon, no, and that's a lot of different events too, right? Um, do I think they could beat uh, Ninja Warriors? Yeah, at, at, at competing at that kind <laughs> yeah, of stuff. I, I don't mean, think so. 
yeah, maybe not. But uh, I'll tell you what, though, it's fascinating to watch the growth of uh, of the sport of CrossFit. Fuck, dude, it's I nuts. mean, yeah. it was. I mean, a lot of people. This was televised, and was a, a lot of people watched this. It's brilliant. Oh, it's it ever since they signed with Reebok, it's been insane, man. And it was they did a, a little throwback to Aromas where this all started, which we have a, a Katrina's family has a house up in Aromas, so it's not far from where she's at to where all this started. They actually threw in some the the show, the most recent video or whatever, uh, showed a bunch of clips of like some of the original parking lot, like I was saying before. I told you guys work like, out, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. competitions it's, or whatever. Yeah, it's crazy. And, I mean, I <laughs> and I watched the way that they prepped this. I just it makes me chuckle, like how they put it together. It's like literally. It's like what is going to destroy these guys and girls? Like, yeah, that's, that's that's the. Thought. I just can see people. <laughs> that's like, the thought organizing process. it. It is. Like, hmm, this it's will like, just fucking kill them. Okay, like they just did this this one almost. Where it's a seven k run, and then you come back, and then you do what they call Jacob's ladder. So it's like a a progression of deadlifts, like starting uh, at like. Yeah. 300, 350, 400, I've four. seen that with the, the power cleans. Like they, they had to clean dude, oh, no. like, yes. like a ladder of cleans. <laughs> I was like, fuck me, dude. Oh, so brutal. And then that, they have to go up and wait like five pound increment or 10 pound increments. Of all the, of all the sports that, in, that involve a barbell, you know, like, like all the strength sports, I guess you could say CrossFit by far is the most spectator friendly. It just is. They, they yeah. look the best. Like Olympic lifters don't always look good. Power lifters definitely don't always look good. It is more yeah exciting. Uh, it's exciting. Because, That's why it's kicking ass, dude. Yeah, I, yeah. And they look good. And the women compete in sports bras. And the dudes take their shirt off. And they're all they all look like fucking. They're all ripped. They all look incredible. What I really appreciate about CrossFit more than anything is uh, the way it shows that women can be very strong. And athletic, and it's changed the perception of what a uh, fit woman should look like. It's done it single-handedly better than any other sport I can think of because these women are muscular. Well, what they I'm, are very muscular. What I'm really interested to see is because it hasn't been around been around very long. Is what happens with a lot of these athletes ten years down the road? Are we going to see similar things like we see with NFL football players and things like that? I think because people uh, like speak of them as the fittest in the world, and to me, if I'm going to categorize somebody as the fittest in the world, I'm thinking of somebody who's been fit for a very long time and maintained health and, and longevity. Right? Oh, no, it's so, too extreme for that. Exactly. It's way, no way. You're, you can't you can't possibly maintain this uh, type of training your entire life. So. I wonder if you're going to get a lot of people burnt out after five years, eight years, 10 years of competing at the sport, just like you see NFL players and, and people that play these sports that are really, really tough on the body day in and day out. <clears throat> so that and, and wondering if those people crash because they don't have another speed, right? They've trained themselves for the last 10 years, which is what we all know as trainers, right? So this is what I see wrong with it still. And this is the, the, the fear that I have for the average Jane or Joe that just want to get in and actually do CrossFit is going in with the, this man, this idea that, okay, this is going to be the way I keep myself in shape going forward because I like it so much, right? Like, mm -hmm. oh, I love, I, love, I love CrossFit. I love doing it. I love the community. It's a life, like what they say, it's a lifestyle. It's all these things, mm -hmm. right? And they sell you on this idea that it's a, a great way to exercise and train, and it really is not. It's an incredible sport. It's a fucking awesome sport. It's really cool to watch. And I think a lot of people are, are signing up to it thinking that it's a great way to get in shape. And it's really not. You're actually teaching yourself really bad habits to get in shape because training at that level, at that high intensity, if you your body's an adaptation machine, it will eventually get adapted to training this intense and this hard. And then where do you go from there? And well, how long can you maintain that? What you'll end up seeing is uh, similar to what you see with um, physique, uh, bodybuilder and bikini competitors who compete over and over again. Is you see this burnout where you know they they call it the you know HPA dysfunction you know with hormone dysfunction or desensitization to the stress hor hor you know hormone cortisol to where all of a sudden they're feeling always <clears throat> fatigued always inflamed. I used to be able to get so lean and now I can't. My body doesn't seem to respond <clears throat> the way it used to. Um, I, I don't recover like I used to, and you kind of get you know down this this horrible cycle, this horrible path where the only way to reverse out of it is their worst nightmare, which is 
you have to do nothing now for three months. Like you have to let your body rest, recover, allow your 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 receptors of some of these stress hormones to upregulate, allow your body to balance itself out. And you imagine telling I know because I've had to work with people like this where you tell them, right. well, here's what you're going to have to do. We're going to have to spend the next year taking it easy. Like that's like uh, a nightmare for these people. Like, they can't imagine having. <laughs> well, to do that. especially if they've put on some weight and they've fallen out of shape, and they're gonna have to, yeah. even more. And and when they they connect being in the best shape of their lives, which is the same thing that happens when we get athletes, right? So when I get a retired NFL, NBA pro athlete, you know, twenty years down the road, they're in their late forties, early fifties, and they're they've put on a bunch of fat and they want to get in shape. They are the hardest fucking clients to to talk to because they cannot get out of their sport mentality. Oh, so they just yeah. they all they want to crush the weights and, and they they only know you know balls to the wall type of training and it, it is so hard to teach them. That, and even with diet, all they know is yes, you it's know, hardcore dieting, hardcore dieting, yeah. or eating a shit ton of food because that's what I did when I was swimming in college and you know it's, I was, it was not a problem. It's a very difficult uh, position to be in, but um, there's definitely uh, we like we know we've talked to people who are influencer influencers in CrossFit, and there's definitely a, a shift going on where people are being smarter about the training. Mm-hmm. It's just when you see the games and you're the average person, you think I want to work out so I can be like these people. Mm-hmm. That is not a way to be you know healthy and fit long term. Not only that, but very few people can even do it anyway. So yeah. Not the average person. It's like, you know what gets on my nerves? These like couch to, you know, couch to marathon, you know, do our thing and we'll take you from the couch to be able to complete a marathon or like, what are you doing to your body? It, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Right, right. And it doesn't always end up uh, the way you want. I have, I was actually at a, a baby shower over the weekend and I ran into a buddy who I hadn't seen in a long time and he's like, oh man, what's up, Sally? He goes, hey, I just started, uh, signed up at this CrossFit gym. Uh, up by where I live. He lives up in San Francisco. And so I'm asking him, how's it going or whatever? And he goes, you know, he goes, I can't do more than once or twice a week. And I said, why? I thought he was talking about a schedule. And he's like, I just, I don't want to. I hurt so bad and I can't move. (laughs) And he goes, I just feel terrible for two days. He goes, but I'm going to give myself some time and then maybe I'll be able to to bring it up. And I I told him, I said, okay. I said, that's not a good sign that you're not able to do anything. You should be able to do something almost every day and you're over applying intensity and he's like well I'm, I'm going really light so well you're not going light enough you're not going easy enough it's obviously too much for your body and, and I'm trying I was explaining to him what's happening with his body but it's very difficult to talk to people about this because they have this yeah because I could already see it in his face like oh I can handle it like yeah. I'm just gonna go we're like, always gonna fight this yeah you know what you I mean know? and and I think that's this is always gonna exist you know whether it's CrossFit or some other form People always like seem to have this like memory of like when they used to uh, be young and they played sports and and that was the best shape of their life and so they they try and like replicate that and what they did in their training what they did every single day and it was like super <laughs> super like rigorous and high intense and like I used to be able to bench this much so then they try and do that and then they you know they tear their bicep and they tear their pec and you know and it's just like. It's it's this this operating system that's it's hardwired in into you know into these people and it's it, it's a tough thing to kick man well, but but that's why we're here we're, we just, we're trying to help you kind of kick that uh, that mentality out it's not effective long term we, we just had somebody on the forum that posted that you know and I believe it said you know I know a lot of people on here don't like CrossFit but I'm really considering you know trying it out and, and doing it this and that and I wrote under there like go for it do it. And I know Sal wrote under there, like, do it with the man with the idea that it's a sport, right? And <clears throat> here's the thing, like, I think that I, I would never tell somebody who said, like, hey, I think I'm thinking about going to play basketball, and I would never tell you don't do it. Like, who am I to tell you don't go play ball? Like, if you want to go play basketball, it's, go play basketball. Just understand, it's fucking basketball. Well, it's, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's not, all it's about not train the, for basketball, right? You know, it's like the like the, the training for CrossFit. Like, there needs to be training for it. Not, CrossFit is not the training. No, right. it's all about the mentality. I'll give you an example. Okay, so running is a perfect example of this because everybody says. Uh, I want to lose weight. I'm going to go run. This is very common with the average person. Two reasons why. One, it's easy. 
because you could just go run. Easy in the sense that it's an easy, like, simple, right? Oh, I just go outside and run. No big deal. Yeah. And two, because initially you'll see results because you're burning calories. Nobody goes out and says to themselves, I'm going to learn how to run and I'm going to learn how to run well. Yeah. It's all about I'm going to run till fatigue. Mm -hmm. That's the only metric people use when they run. And this is why running is the number one uh, cause of injury in people. Mm -hmm. of, all, of all athletic endeavors, nothing causes more problems and more issues in people than running. And it's not because necessarily running is bad. It's because people are approaching running with the mentality that they're going to run to fatigue. That's right. the metric. It's not about running well. You're going to ignore all the feedback that your body's giving you because In fact, you're just going to try and get through it. Well, they're supposed to ignore it. Yeah. That's what they're telling themselves. I'm running to fatigue, so I it's a it's a battle of attrition. I'm ignoring all these things. So, if I go to play basketball with that same mentality, I'm going to go play basketball to fatigue. I'm not going to learn how to shoot well. I'm not going to learn how to dribble well. I'm not going to learn good technique and movement. I'm not going to learn basketball rules. I'm just going to go play basketball till I can fucking not move anymore. How well do you think I'm going to play basketball? And how, uh, how, how high are my odds of getting injured? CrossFit is the same thing. Yeah. If you approach CrossFit like a sport, it can be a fantastic workout. It can be an amazing workout. But if you approach it with a sport mentality like, I need to learn how to do CrossFit well, right. you will not go in with the fatigue mentality which is like i said with running where you're going in and your and your metric for your workout is endure endure and pain and pain yeah. and then you cause problems that's all it is and it's honest to god if you go into it thinking i'm going to go sign up for crossfit i'm going to try this i'm going to go to this crossfit box and do these workouts and i'm going to learn crossfit as well as i can we'll start with running you'll be well cuz oh my god there's so many variables in crossfit that yes. are so many skills that you need to master going into that. Good luck. It'll take you a while. Well, no, so you, but that's okay. Forever. You, you drew the the, the parallel uh, with bodybuilding, which was the same thing that when I got into competing, I trained for a year of getting myself ready before I ever even considered getting on stage. And a lot of that getting ready was sculpting a physique, dialing in a diet, understanding, because you're trying to peak for a show. Like I, it's there, there's the sport of it is you have to get to this extremely low, unhealthy body fat percentage and then present yourself on stage on a certain time on a certain date. Right? Like, so there's definitely a strategy to that. And yeah. it wasn't like I just signed myself up and said, hey, I'm going to go do this. Like I'm entering in a world I know. And that's an area where I think I, I'm, I'm pretty well versed in nutrition. I'm pretty well versed in program design. And I still took the time to train that way. It's the same, it's any the same extreme, mentality. Any extreme endeavor uh, can bring out the worst in you, but it can also bring out the best. I mean, we were just uh, last week, we were meeting with a, 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 another bikini competitor. And I'm hearing her talk about how before her competition, I could barely walk 10 feet before I had to sit down. I felt terrible. It was so horrible. But she's saying it with a smile as if it's this thing to brag about. But I showed up with 2% body fat and I was shredded. And it's, it, that, there's a good part to that in the sense that you're testing yourself and you're learning what you're made of and everything else becomes easy af afterwards. But there's also this potential bad part where you're doing damage to your body and you could potentially develop this horrible relationship with activity or diet or whatever. This can happen with CrossFit. This is going to happen with marathon running. This can happen with anything that is pushing you to this extreme level. If you go into it with the right mentality, you'll succeed and you'll be okay in life. If you don't, you can run into some problems. Quick commercial break, you guys. We keep getting asked all the time, how can I support the Mind Pump family? Here's one of the best ways you guys can. You guys love that Chimera Coffee that we have. Chimera Coffee with a K. You go to ChimeraCoffee.com. Put in the discount code Mind Pump for 10% at the checkout. Also, if you guys want to know how I have this luxurious beard and you want one too, go to BigTopBeardCompany.com. Put in the discount Mind Pump again, but this time for 33% off. Also, you guys, if you guys have not tried Ben Greenfield's new bars out, they're fantastic. If you want some, go to BenGreenfieldFitness.com forward slash Nature Bite. Put in the code Mind Pump and get 10% off. Go check it out. Next up is Aristotle Daphnis. If you could only take three or fewer supplements, what would they be? It's probably be different for all of us, right? Well, I can. Well, yeah. Well, fewer. for sure. For me, it's vitamin D, protein, and creatine. Mm. Yeah. So, so one of those for sure that's different is your vitamin D, but you because you've noticed a yeah deficiency, you, a benefit with your eyes. Yeah. Has it been pretty dramatic? I wouldn't say traumatic, but it's a you know there's definitely stuff that I've I've put together with the with the diet and my psoriasis. So. 
when when I'm staying away from uh, any sort of gluten, so breads, pasta, stuff like that, I notice that it does suppress it. I do know when I'm getting a good amount of vitamin D, whether it be naturally through the sun or I'm supplementing it, it also suppresses it. And it, it's kind of funny. It, they they each they, it'll never go away. Like with psoriasis, it doesn't get eliminated, right? It's not eczema can go away. Psoriasis is forever with you. Know, you know, that's what they say. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Maybe we. I mean, I would love for them to prove the other way, but as of now, they believe that psoriasis is not curable. That it's something that once you have it, you have it. I think they say that because uh, there's a lot of things that we um, we can't solve with with Western medicine, um, and the odds are very poor. So they'll say. It's not curable, but there are cases of spontaneous remission of some of the most insane shit. Like there's cases of people with stage four, you know, pancreatic cancer with, you know, they're like, oh, you're not going to make it for, you know, maybe two months, two months left. And then something happens and poof, it's gone. There's actually cases of, they're not, they're definitely not common. They're very rare. Right, right. So it's very interesting to me, um, you know, when I, when, when I hear doctors say that, you know what I mean? That, I think they're just setting people up like, okay, don't get your hopes up. Cause but I, would pro- I would probably go with those or arguably now it's pretty funny ever since we've been, uh, I've been using the green, the green juice. I actually feel really good just because it's hard for me to get my, uh, my vegetables in every single day. So what do you notice from the green juice? Cause I just started just overall, I've never used the green, juice just before. overall energy. Do you really? Yeah, just overall energy. I just feel good. Like I tend to, uh, you know, I, I'm pretty normal. I think where I have these these dips of energy when uh, throughout the day, and it's normally when I'm not consuming enough or getting enough nutrients, I'll feel kind of weak and tired. Uh, it keeps me pretty vibrant and consistent throughout the day. Interesting. So yeah, do you and- notice any changes to your like like gut health when you take it? No, I, I mean, like you, I don't have a lot of gut issues, so I don't, I don't notice like my, my stool's pretty consistent. I don't, I don't have any major stomach issues that bother me, digestive like stuff. Like I, that's definitely your wheelhouse. Because I've been taking the, I've been messing with the green uh, drink, and that's I'm not normally a fan of that kind of stuff. I really don't, I'm not, a, don't ever supplement with that that kind of stuff. But I started using it, and I think I'm noticing some beneficial, uh, some benefits to my gut health. So I wonder if I'm feeding the right bacteria. I got to talk to Dr. Ruscio uh, and see what he says about that. Um, for me, it, it's going to be one of them is going to be specific, uh, which is a probiotic. Um, I just can't do without a good quality probiotic at the moment. I can go off of it for a little while, but then I need to reintroduce it. And it's just your, you know, basic Lactobacillus, Bifido, uh, you know, Bifido type you know, bacteria. Um, the Organifi one is great. I've used that one now and I like it. Um, the one I've used p- before was Ultimate Flora, which is another brand that's really good. Um, but if I take those uh, semi-regularly, I get good. Um, I feel good. My, my gut is healthy. I feel good. My digestion is good. Um, the second supplement that I think I would use is creatine. Um uh, not that I use it all the time consistently, but because creatine is one of the only ones that I notice a benefit from in terms of my training, I can tell if I'm off of it or if I'm on it, I can see that I'm stronger. And there are some studies now showing that there may be some long-term health benefits uh, to taking creatine, although I'm not going to quite make that claim yet. Uh, but there are a couple studies that say it's good for the heart and it may be good for uh, brain health uh, long-term. Um, and then third supplement, uh, that's a tough one, probably a protein powder. Um, I don't use a protein powder very regularly, but if I do make a smoothie or I do blend something, I've done it with coffee, which is actually pretty good where I'll blend, uh, the protein with coffee and then throw some coconut oil in there. And that's really fucking delicious, uh, mm. before a workout. Yeah. That's pretty much it. But the probiotic for me, uh, is the one that I, if I had to take just one, that that one would be the one I wouldn't want to give up. Yeah, pretty pretty similar for me. Like uh, creatine has always been one that you know I come back to, um, back and forth with. Um, and then, like you said, the probiotic is something I tend to use more. Just just every now and then when I feel like my gut needs, um, you know, needs some some you know good influential bacteria in there. Um, and so for that. Um, I also like um, ashwagandha. You, you kind of got me onto that. Um, Have you been stress. taking it? Yeah. How do you think? How do you feel on it? I feel great. Yeah, I feel like um, 
I, I've been using it more to like kind of deal with because as of late, like with my wife as well, I've been really kind of stressed out and overly, um, you know, uh, dealing with that. And so um, it's been, it seems to be helping with that somewhat. So, and I noticed, that, you know, in the green juice, it's in there as well. So we mm-hmm. started kind of, um, I just started trying that over the weekend, really like it. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to dive into that a bit further, but um, yeah, f- pretty much those three, like protein powder for me, um, pretty inconsistently I'll use. Um, but when I, I do uh, train, when I, when I get on my intense sort of training protocol, which, you know, I, I, I tend to undulate, um, that's something that will show up quite a bit. So. Yeah. I, uh, for me, mainly, I, I have a lot of supplements at home. But I use them all depending on right. That's why it was hard to pick like three because I'm like, uh, yeah, kind of like. I don't really take anything around super couple, con- yeah. consistent. I, like I said, the probiotics, the one that I have, to, I probably take the most consistent. I oh. use I use protein the most consistent I, only mm. for that. That how many pro- days a week would you say you use protein powder? Mm, four. Okay. Yeah, four okay. At, at least. Yeah, that's pretty consistent. Yeah, I would say at least at least a four on a normal week, as high as every day. So I have a question week. for you because you've always used whey. You've always used whey protein. As long as I've I'm, known you, and now I'm using pea protein. Now you're using the pl- well. It's got a, more than that. It's got other. It's got a blend, but it's a it's a vegan protein. Right, right. There's no there's no dairy, no animal. Is there a? Do you notice any difference at all in how you feel between the two? I've I've gone through one jug so far, and so far I, I love it. I haven't gone back to whey, and I actually just bought some whey to make that comparison. So I'd like to see. Funny if that a you. Difference. It's funny that you asked that because. I felt great, and I'm for sure I'm somebody who does not like to like speculate on like supplements and be like, oh yeah, it makes me feel this way for sure. Until I really start to like compare and contrast, just like go back and forth, right? And so, and I've been consistent and tracking. And I'm on everything right now, so this is a time for me to do this. I've gone through uh, a jug and a half now of the Organifi stuff. Really, really love it. Um, I believe I do feel better on it. I do believe that uh, when I'm on the way. That I hold water from it, it seems like I'm, or I get. It's little, still organic, right? You're still doing the organic way with naturally. Flavored. No, no, this is like when I. This is like my old like optimum nutrition way. Oh, so that's what I want to compare. Because I would also like to because that go. was my favorite brand for years. I used optimum yep. nutrition way, yep. and I want to just compare and see how I feel. And so I have both of them now. And I was just about to start kind of playing with that. I wanted to finish this next jug and then I'm going to implement it. Into Cause the I'd like to see you since you, cause I can't have whey. So it's not like I can, I can, I know the difference. Cause I know if I drink whey, I'll shit myself. But if you <laughs> did, I'd like to see you do whey that's organic and not artificially flavored and compare that to the plant protein. Cause then you could isolate, Oh, it's the whey. you know what I mean? Cause maybe it's the sucralose. Cause I know optimum nutrition Uses sucralose to uh, yeah, to do. flavor their stuff, they and sucralo- sucralose is not good for your gut flora for sure. We know that it, it kills like fifty percent of the beneficial bacteria in particular. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if you did organic, non artificially flavored whey because whey there's no problem with whey. There's not an issue. Whey is actually a good protein. I, I have some Whole Foods uh, uh, whey that's that I could use, but I I wanted to do optimum nutrition because I did it for so many years. I just want to see. Yeah. I want to see like if I was if I, like, what I've done to <laughs> yeah, myself. Yeah, I do. Like that's just kind of how my brain works, right? I know that probably the route that you're thinking would probably be better for me trying to narrow down. Is it the way that's making me feel that way or not? Where I'm more concerned how much I was fucking myself up by taking that because I used to live off of those. I mean, I was going through that big 73 serving jug easily every month and some. So, so I, so I'll, which my, gives you, what I tell you, that tells you I'm doing two shakes. So my cousins a long time ago, they don't have a dairy intolerance necessarily, but they do the whey protein. And they were joking about how they'd get the protein farts, which is, this is super common in our, in our world. People will talk oh about all the God. time. Like, oh, oh, I just had a shake and that's why my farts smell, right? Not realizing that's probably a bad sign. Yeah. So my cousin was, was we were actually hanging out and he farted and it fucking cleared the room. And I was making <laughs> fun of him. He's like, oh, it's just because I had a protein shake. And so I'm like, dude, you should try... A plant-based one. This was before we worked with Organifi. I don't remember the brand we went through. It might have been Warrior. I'm not sure. Mm. But he switched to a plant-based one, and he never had a problem again with uh, the protein farts. Mm. So I'm interested to see if there's a difference, because dairy in general is a super common intolerance for people. Not for everybody. It's just one of the one of the top yeah. ones. So I'd be interested to see if what oh happens, Adam, God, if you do- Those protein farts. Ugh, <laughs> bring me back, dude. Yeah. <laughs> 
Next up is Jessica May 1231. How did you guys build confidence? <laughs> loaded. Like in general. Yeah, loaded, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> loaded question. Mm. That's a uh can you how about this? Can you guys remember when you were the your most un, in, like unconfident? Like when were you the most self-conscious? Mm. You know. Probably like junior high. Probably, right? Yeah. Where you're feeling Oh just my like, god, just yeah. Cause, well, because so many things are happening then, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you're just like, your voice is changing. <laughs> you're, you're trying to talk to girls and, oh, man, well, it was scary. You know what? This this kind of reminds me of, the and this this be, could be touching the third rail a bit here, oh, no. with the, the whole bullying topic, right? Oh, okay. Um, hmm. I, I definitely was picked on as a kid. I mean, I had crooked teeth. I was a poor kid. I so I had like knockoff clothes. Like, mm-hmm. um, did you get beat up or just picked on? I, like no, these? I no, I've been, I've been, I was jumped as a kid when I was, uh, I was here with fifth grade. Fifth grade, I got, I got beat up by an older, o- older classmen. Me and a friend of mine, we were jumped in the classroom. So I was definitely bullied, bullied enough to where my dad had to come down to school, and bullied enough to where in eighth grade I was pulled out and homeschooled for a year. So I, I definitely have thrown in a dumpster. All that shit's happened to me. So I, I, I get, right. That could, that counts as like re- legitimate. Bullying. That's, oh, yeah, 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 that's yeah, bad, yeah. dude. Right, right. Wow. So, and you know oh, what? I got bullied too, dude. I, yeah. So I, I went through all of that and you know what? Like I, I it built a lot of character in me, man. It made me, uh, it, it, it definitely, I think it, it was tough as a kid. I remember going through it enough to where, like, I, I remember getting in fights all the time when I was in eighth grade, and I and I remember telling my mom, like, I don't want to go to school here anymore, and I didn't have, and she was like, well, it was either homeschool or go to school there, and I said, okay, well, take me out. I want to homeschool. I fucking hate these kids, and so I remember, I remember that, um, but I also remember too, like it, like it, it, it definitely built some thick skin on me. And it, and as I got older, I realized like that, like these kids were the reason why they were picking on me. The reason why the, these people were attacking me was their own insecurities and their own issues. And once I, once I, put, how long did it take you to realize that? I don't, re- I, I'm trying to remember right now as we're talking about this, like w- if there was a moment that that happened. Cause while it's happening, it, it's, I mean, I, I experienced not to that extent, but I experienced similar, it's. When you're going through it, it's terrible. Yeah, right. Yeah. You when feel I feel horrible. Right. When I was going through it, it was it was awful and I cried and all that stuff happened, right? But at one point I, I had put that together and I don't and I definitely I wish I would said it could say that it was my mom or my dad that told me that and said that and then it, it sunk in, but it wasn't that. It was something else. And when it did and I realized that it really like for the rest of my life going forward, it was like, Oh my God, this is all like I then I could see all of a sudden I could see through everything. Like People, I would be in circles and I would hear someone like calling someone name and I, and like inside I'd be like, oh my God, like that kid's so insecure about his own issues mm-hmm. that he's got to make fun of that kid's shoes. But that's really because he's insecure. It's not mm-hmm. because that kid's a dork for wearing those shoes. It's because that kid's got more issues going on. Inside. And I, once I started to realize that, uh, it built confidence in me. Like, and then, then I, then I began to own who I was and like that I was different, that I dressed different, that fuck it, that I had crooked teeth, fuck it, that I had a car that was all fucked up and had to drive to school. I didn't, I I started to build this confidence of, you know what? It's who I am. It's who I am. And I'm proud of who I am. And I'm not going to change myself for anybody else. And I, and I really blossomed into that confident kid in high school. So it wasn't until high school. So I got bullied all through elementary and junior high school. And and there was things that led up to that. Like I remember in junior high, part of why I got bullied was I, I moved to Colorado and I was, uh, so I was, I was darker than what I am now. So I was like, right now I'm like super light. When I was a younger kid, I was in the sun all the time. So I was dark complected. So I looked, I looked more uh, Hispanic when I was younger. So, and then I moved to a school, Colorado, where all white kids and so I was teased and I was, you know, all kinds of racial slurs and picked on and fights and all that stuff like that. And I also was a really good basketball player. And the most popular kid in school was the point guard. And I took his starting position. <laughs> so imagine this kid comes in. I'm the new kid. I take his starting position. He's the most popular kid. So he made my life miserable on campus. So, you know, and basketball court was my only outlet. Like playing ball was my only out. And in fact, I played the season before. Give him a shout out, you fucking loser. <laughs> <laughs> Eat a dick. Yeah. So, um, 
<laughs> well, I was aggressive. So. But, it, you know, I, I see people and it reminds me of, you know, I remember when Lane was on the show and he shared like his bully story, right? And some people never grow out of it. Like they get bullied and they forever had this. It's traumatizing. Chip. Right. It was so traumatizing for someone like him. I could see the chip that he carries on his shoulder, even as a grown ass man. If, where, you, if you carry it with you as an adult, they're still bullying you. Right. That, that, I, I remember re- reaching that point, understanding that. Like, right. Right. You, right. I agree. It's like you're still yeah. giving your power away. And I think that's where part of this confidence building comes from is you realize that when you're insecure, when you're fearful, when you allow those people to make you feel that way, you're giving your power away. And the, the best way that you can gain power and gain confidence is to just not allow it to affect you. Yeah. And one of the best ways that I learned to do that was to realize that those people that were doing those things that were making me feel insecure or making me that way, they had the biggest issues out of all of them. And then I started to feel sorry for those people. Then I realized like, oh, this poor loser. Like I'm, I'm, I'm sad because I have fucking crooked teeth. Like this kid, like literally like his parents, like don't love him. Like, (laughs) and I'm like, I, I started to put that stuff together and that built a lot of confidence. And then come high school time, like I was me, man. I like, Mm -hmm. I was totally confident in who I was. And I remember, like I said, of being, having like, I didn't, I had, I didn't get my braces until I was out of high school and my front two teeth were literally like turned in. I was skinny as rails. I was six foot over six foot tall and weighed like 150 pounds, but I did it the hottest girl in school. And I did because I was outgoing and confident and talked to everybody and was friends with everybody. And like, I never let anybody like get to me like that. So Mm, that's, I had like a very, very similar story to you, but like it, I, I was picked on, but I was like, like for me, it was more about facing my fears, which led me to uh, become more confident. And um, mainly, like I, I just I didn't like conflict. I didn't like conflict. I didn't like, um, you know, when people like did me wrong or. And so I would I would like fight that internally. Like, should I do something about this? Should I not do something about this? Should I do something about this? And and th- this sort of like internal like battle would go on all the time for me. And like I kind of had to work my way because I didn't really necessarily get picked on like like you know just beat down or anything. But like I would face all these like opportunities to fight, and I would I would pull back and I would feel like no 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 I'm being a coward. And, and so then I would take opportunities where, okay, let's, let's do this. And then, you know, I get my ass whooped and, and then it would, it would, I would go back and like regroup and, and try, try and like better myself. And I would go back again. I'd challenge, you know, some bully. So I would usually go out and find people that were punking other people and I would, I would challenge them. And so this is like, this was, this was like a, a continuous process of me growing up because I saw bullies pick on my brother he's two years older than me like all the time and it used to fucking just drive me crazy and and so i was like working my way up the ladder into where like finally like i i like this guy was like punking my brother and i was just like hey you know and we got into it and you know and i just was like no like i'm not waiting for this person to throw you know first or this to happen or this scenario in my head to go off i'm just going for it and i went for it and then you know, and I I got him pretty good, and I gave him a bloody nose and all that stuff. And <laughs> I was just like, yeah, you know, and and you know, and then after that, I started to kind of bully people, and I and I realized that about myself because I got this like crazy like confidence that I could overpower somebody, and I started getting stronger. And How was, old were you when you did, started doing that? I was probably like um, maybe just seventh grade, like sixth grade, seventh grade. I was starting to kind of bully other kids a little bit, and um, I, and I I kind of realized, and I felt like gross, you know, and I, I started to do that, and I wouldn't feel right about it, and um, and I checked myself on that, and then just kind of started to vet, like turn myself more onto sports, and like uh, I realized I was really good at sports, and that was my outlet, and I could outlet like all my aggression could go into that direction because I had a lot of aggression, and that like kept building once I got into. Um, you know, when I, when I was going through like all these hormonal changes and, uh, puberty and all that kind of stuff, like I had this like rage that just like came over me. And so I got into football and that was it, man. That was my place, my outlet. And, uh, I, I would like dominated in that space because this was where I could, I could leave it there and it was a sport 
and then I could come back and everybody like shook hands, hug, all that stuff. And it was fine. And I didn't bring that onto any other kids or anything. Do you attribute a lot of the, the uh, football to your confidence, like being good on the football field and, and being able to do that? Did you feel like that transferred yeah. over into? Absolutely. Yeah. Lot, lot, lots of my, well, accolades, you know, from football, basketball somewhat and baseball, I was just like a, a natural athlete and, um, you know, and I, I did do well in school, but at the same time, my brother like excelled. So that was always something that like, you know, I, I was always like frustrated with, you know, cause like he, he just, it came so easy for him and it was so hard for me. I had to really, you know, buckle down and try. So anyway, this was like a perpetual thing for me to gain confidence. So I wasn't confident, uh, you know, academically, or I wasn't confident speaking in front of people. So I had to immerse myself into that. And then, you know, it's been this like this progression in life where I, I gain new confidence by immersing myself into something that I suck at. So mm. that's been the thing. Yeah, I wasn't ever I wasn't always confident, but I was always assertive. I was always very assertive. So although um, I lacked confidence uh, in certain situations growing up, I've always had a big mouth and uh, not always the best combination, um, <laughs> you know, because it, it got me into trouble uh, quite a few times. So like, you know, I got, I would get bullied too, but I wouldn't allow myself to get bullied because uh, I'd have to say something. So I was that kid that would get hit and then the bully would be like, you know, stay down and I'd get up. Or he'd be like, don't say anything. And I'd be like, fuck you. And he'd hit me. And he'd be like, fuck you. And hit me. And everybody would be like, just stop saying that. Stop. He's going to beat you up. And I would just... Stay down, man. Yeah, and I would just keep like keep saying you know, what I want to say because uh, I just... I couldn't. I couldn't not uh, say anything. I had an uh, experience in junior high like that where I, I got jumped. And uh, I actually got jumped. And, uh, and then they tried to jump me again. And I got away. And I realized that the only way I would stop this was I had to figure out a way to fight the dude that was running this whole thing in front of everybody. And so I literally had to walk up to him and his little gang and in front of the school make a big production and challenge him to a one-on-one -on -one fight because I knew he wouldn't be able to turn that down in front of everybody and he wouldn't be able to jump me because I said one-on-one. -on -one. And that was fucking terrifying. It was terrifying to not only have to go up to these dudes that jumped me already twice, but then to have to tell him I'm going to fight you one-on-one, -on -one, which I didn't want to do. I didn't want to get... Which, by the way, is how you can tell this is a true story because that literally was like what you would say back then. Yeah. We're going to do this one-on-one. -on -one. One -on -one. Yeah, exactly. One-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> else. Your friends and, can't come in. <laughs> and I did. I, I went up to him in front of everybody and I first I told a bunch of people I would do it because I wanted a lot of witnesses because mm. I wanted to make sure they didn't jump me. Mm -hmm. And then I went over there and, I, and it was terrifying. Like I had to fucking do that. And then I had to fight him afterwards, which I did. And it did stop uh, the whole thing because I think they realized I was just a pain in the ass. Like, we're going to keep <laughs> fucking with this kid and he's going to be a pain in the ass. Because my next step was going to be I was going to bring like a bat to school and go crazy. Like, and I can see now how, how kids like escalate shit because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's like you have like you, you, you almost create this scenario in your head where you have no other option. Yeah. So like my only option would have been like, well, now I'm going to take a bat to school and, and start, you know, hitting people with it or so it's a, it was a terrible, but I've always been very assertive. A lot of my confidence initially came from being the oldest of four. And as a child, uh, I was given a lot of responsibility. I was told, my mom used to say things like, you know, you and your siblings are like a, a train and you're the head caboose. And whichever direction you go, the other, you know, the other, you know, cabooses or whatever are going to follow. So if you turn left, they're all going to go left. If you go right, they're all going to go right. So locomotive, the thing that's in the front? Uh, maybe. So I had all this, uh, 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 so I had all this, this like responsibility and pressure. Like I have to, I have to do the right thing because otherwise my siblings are going to, they're going to copy me and do the same thing. So I had all this responsibility. So I had lots of confidence there. Then in school, I built confidence in high school because I just, you probably got really good grades. Um, I got good grades on accident. I didn't try. I just, mm. I just did it. it. Was really boring, but I just, you know, I just kind of just did my thing. I was just me, and that right there translates, I guess, into confidence, especially when you're in school. When you're the kid in high school who does his own thing and doesn't care, it's kind of weird because nobody does that, right? Yeah. Nobody does that in high school. Everybody wants to be the same. It's not like college or when you're older, where if you're unique. I was having this conversation with a friend of mine where he was telling me how he played an instrument. And I was laughing because I'm like, you know, it's funny. 
you play the piano. That's exactly what would have made you a fucking nerd in, in, in junior high and high school. It's exactly what it would have yeah. gotten you laid as so you got older. You, laid later for you know sure. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and, and it's just, I just was myself. And then when I went into the gyms and started working in gyms and managing gyms, I was extremely assertive and just very confident in my ability to lead because I had done this with my, with my siblings. And as an adult, it's just um, confidence is not cocky. Confidence is not outward. You don't think to yourself. It's just self-belief. Yeah, you don't think to yourself, I'm confident. Like you don't walk in and be like, I'm confident. That's not how it works. Real confidence is very calm. And you mm. know when you meet people who are confident. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're just very calm and they're very comfortable in their they own They just skin. know how to navigate through you know whatever scenario they're in. And I think that's that comes with experience. And, and I tried to... to immerse myself in as many experiences as I could. So that way I knew sort of how to dig my way out or how to like move and, and read the crowd and read the energy and read the person and, you know, uh, you know, like, a like move accordingly. So. Yeah. It's, it's all about self-belief, but I think people confuse self-belief with believing that they're the best or, you know, that's not necessarily confidence. Like, I'm going to go in here and I know I'm going to win. Like, that's a part of com- competitive confidence. Yeah. But that's not really confidence because all it takes to break that is for you to lose. The second you get your ass kicked. Yeah, now what? You know? Yeah. But if you believe, you have self-belief in yourself that no matter what happens, you're going to be fine and you're going to learn from whatever and you're going to try again and you're not a quitter or you're not a loser or yeah. that's real confidence when you go into a, a scenario it's like the stuff people can't take away from you yeah you know, you're always going to you know keep th- uh, that identity that that part of you like that you believe in like you're going to keep that regardless of any scenario it makes life fun yeah. it really does and it's funny because when you ask a bunch of people they do these they do these studies all the time and they'll ask people what the top fears are for people like what are the number one like your top five things that make you feel really anxious and fearful and you know what's one of the top ones always public speaking Mm -hmm. super safe you're not going to get killed you're not doing anything dangerous you're talking in front of a group of people i know people who freak out because they have to give a speech at a wedding like I've I've had family members who are like, oh my god, I got picked. I'm the best man. Yeah, like, yeah. And they're fucking sweating. It's fear and being humiliated by all these people, right? But I mean, are you really? You know what I mean? Like right, right. it's it's such a it's such a thing that we created in our yeah. own minds. It's so true that the thought of things is far worse than the actual things themselves. And the panic of it makes you perform worse. You know, yeah. it's like just just abandon that idea and just you know go for it and just own you know what you are like. Uh, you know, if I, I look, I'm, I'm, I suck at most sports. I didn't play a lot of sports and I'm not good at them. Like I own it and it's okay. And I laugh about it and it makes me confident about it. It's kind of strange, right? Like I could hide it and pretend like I'm not, but the fact that I own it and it's not a big deal to me, I come I'm sure it comes across as confidence, even though I don't really think about it that way. I just think to myself, like, whatever, who cares? I own what I am. I'm, you know, I'm short or I'm this or I'm that, or uh, it's just who you are and just kind of own it and be okay with it. And then the confidence, I guess, comes second. I don't- well, the key is, uh, you know, it's what, pe- what people allow is the other people to affect that, right? Mm-hmm. It's like you just named some things like short, not good at sports. Like that only matters or that only bothers people when the other people point it out. Like if I say like, Sal, you're really shitty at sports. Yeah. Well, if I do that, that's... That's my own insecurities. You have the ability to like know that, Adam like, twelve, like, oh, Adam must feel like he has something to prove in sports because he's he's uh, you know attached himself to being an athlete, and so he obviously feels like he has something to prove by putting me down to make himself better. That poor guy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like when you learn to look at it like that, when people say these things or oh you're short this and that well all those things that people attack you and that's their own issue that's their reflection of their own issues and once you learn to look at like that and it's like yeah i can't do anything i'll tell you what what might help here's what might help because it's so hard like you can't chase confidence i don't think you can necessarily be like i'm going to be confident it's like trying to chase meditation i don't think it works that way but listen to a bunch of like self-help you know yeah come on i think uh you know what might be good about this find a very confident person as soon as that real confidence real calm confidence and just watch them. I've actually learned from a few people, a uh, few friend of my friends of mine, in situations where I just look at them like, "Holy shit!" Like that is the that in this particular scenario, this is one of the most confident, 
cool people I've ever met. I just watch them and see what they do. And then I realize like there's nothing magic. They're not doing anything magical. Mm. Uh, I mean, we all know those people, right? Where you go walk into a situation. Yeah. I mean, I had a, I have a buddy. He's not good looking. He's not very fit. Uh, like on paper, there's nothing spectacular about the guy, but he walks into a room and he owns it. He's not even trying to. It's just who he is. He just walks in. He owns it. One of the most confident individuals I've ever met. And I used to love going places with him because I'd, I'd watch him. And she'd be like, what? And right. I'd watch and just see what he's unbelievably doing. comfortable with himself. Yeah, just super so comfortable. So comfortable with who they are. Yeah, you know, that's I, it. Really, really, that's, that's, the, that's the answer, right? Is becoming ultra confident and or, uh, comfortable with who you are. That's it. Quick commercial break. Hey, people ask us all the time how they can support Mind Pump. Here's what you can do. Uh, you can go to www.brain.fm forward slash mind pump and get 20% off Brain FM for meditation or focus. You can also go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump and get a 30 day trial plus one free audio book. Lastly, you can go to getnatureblend.com forward slash mind pump and you will get a discount on Ben Greenfield's CBD product. Next up is Police Fitness Nutrition. Oh, one of our favorite pages. What is the dumbest piece of fitness equipment you guys ever purchased? <laughs> this is great. So when I first uh, uh, opened my personal training slash wellness facility, I had a partner. And my business partner was really into like the fitness tools mm-hmm. type of stuff. And so I fucking so mad at him for buying some of this shit because it was my money. I was the fucking backer. I was the financial backer <laughs> for the whole thing. But one of the dumbest pieces of equipment I've ever seen in my entire... I remember when he ordered it. I got the box. I opened it up. And I'm like, what the fuck is this thing? And he's like, oh, it's a body blade. Oh, it's a body blade. <laughs> yeah. You bought one of those? Yeah. Shake, yeah. shake, 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 yeah. shake. He's like, it's fucking it's cool. It's the OG shake weight. He's like, you shake it and then you do like, you know, stability exercises and you fucking this, that and the other. It was the biggest waste of money of all time. It was totally stupid, totally worthless, and it collected dust in my gym. It sat in the corner and didn't do shit at all. And then the second dumbest piece of equipment was, uh, so Perform Better. You guys know the website, Mm performbetter.com? Okay. Overpriced uh, fitness equipment for the most part. Functional equipment for $5,000. Foam roller, $175. Anyway, so uh, we bought foam rollers from there, and they had this vibrating foam roller that you bought and it said on there like vibrates intensely and i'm thinking like oh shit like this is back when i thought you were breaking up adhesions and doing self myofascial release right we know better now but i'm thinking like oh shit if it vibrates on there it might actually be more effective because i'm thinking of this like hard vibrating like thing that i'm laying on my it band I'm like okay i'll buy one of these right so i order it and it's it was a short black foam roller so it was one of the half ones and then on the side of it there was like this white uh, twist knob that you turn to the right and then it vibrates. And it was weak as fuck. Like you get on it and it didn't even vibrate that strongly. So it didn't really do anything. So all we did is we use it like a foam roller. So I'm all, this is stupid. I spent more money for nothing, whatever. Until you notice a, can- Mean- a candle slides out so, of it. So, well, hold on. So, yeah, <laughs> so I know I've told this story before. Yeah. So I have it in the gym. It's sitting in the gym. It's in the corner. And I used to train, one of the things I used to do that my clients used to love uh, something that we kind of became known for is that people could bring their kids when they'd come and work out because we're a small studio and we'd have a lot of moms that uh, would have like post-pregnancy and they'd bring their baby. And I'm really, I love children, I love kids. So I'd hold their kids or feed their kids while they work out. And it became this thing. It actually got me a lot of clients. Uh, but uh, this lady that we trained, she came to work out. It was post-pregnancy and she worked out with us. She actually trained with uh, one of my other trainers, but I played with her son and the little boy got older and he became a toddler so we'd run around the gym, and while, while we're training clients, we kind of keep an eye on them, but it was cool. It was great atmosphere. So this little guy runs over to the uh, vibrating foam roller, <laughs> and he's playing with it. And so I, don't, I'm just, I see he's over there. He's safe. There's nothing bad. We're working out. Well, he fucking runs over to his mom with a dildo. In his hand, a old school, an old school white. Like if you, if you're my, okay, if you're, if you're like 35 or older, you remember those ads in the back of magazines where a woman is holding up a white tapered end dildo up to her face, and it says back massager. Like they're bullshitting you. They're trying to sell you it's a fucking vibrator, but they would it would say back massager, and for sure women were buying these. To, to masturbate with. But anyway, it was that old, that's the one it was. It was an old school, hard plastic, white, tapered end, 
fucking vibrator. Disguised as a foam roller. Pulls mm. it. It was in the. It was in the foam roller. You sniff it. So he runs over to. What his, is the point of that? I don't so understand. he runs over to his mom, and he shows his mom, and she's looking at us like, "Where did my son get this?" And I can't figure it out. I'm like, "What the fuck just happened?" We had a vibrator in the, and then I look at the back of it, and it's the twist knob, and I'm like, "Oh shit!" And I go over the foam roller, and there's an empty hole, and I stick it in there. I'm like, oh my God, he pulled it out of this thing. And we're all dying of laughter. <laughs> and I'm furious at performbetter.com for selling me a fucking vibrator inside a foam roller. So I took a picture of it and I emailed it to him. And I'm like, you're going to fucking refund me for selling Because I know what they did. They went and bought a fucking shit ton of cheap ass Chinese made. <laughs> old used ones. Yeah, yeah, old that they couldn't sell. Yeah. And then they just like, oh shit, we can stick them back and buy the foam roller. I'm like, mm. That was ridiculous. That was dumb. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They have a better version of that now, though. Yeah, they, yeah I, of course yeah, they do. Probably because yeah. of me. And it's awesome. So I'm like, you're going to yeah. give me a refund or I'm going to tell everybody <laughs> it about feels this. feels great, actually. I did anyway. Yeah. I'm trying to think of the, the the dumbest piece of equipment. I have not bought a lot of gimmicky tools. I'm not going to lie. I, uh, I own the wheel. I own battle ropes. I own BOSU ball. And I have had uh, pads for boxing and stuff, some cones. I really have not bought a lot of gimmicky stuff. I will say this, though. Probably the biggest waste of money out of them is probably my battle ropes because I sure as shit don't use those hardly ever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm like Mr. No Cardio Guy. I'm certainly not Mr. Go fucking swing ropes around for cardio. I don't know what I was oh, thinking I miss when I, ropes. We don't when have I any bought those. those. I got some. I fucking donate them to the yeah, studio. Yeah, bring, don't, bring I'll, it in. I'll, I will bring I'll use them. I do, yeah, I, I used them for, I can count on one hand how many times I've used those. Where did you things. do them? Just outside? Yeah, in my house, you know, I had. Remember, I used to run boot camp, so I did use them for that. So I used, I used them for camp. I made other people do them, but I fucking didn't use them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like one of those, Who's yeah. the one that came up with that? By the way, the battle ropes. Yeah, I don't know. It's a good, I feel like it's an old training tool that someone. Yeah, I don't know, because then you. I remember seeing too, like uh, somebody was using chains like that as well. Like at the same time, it was like I feel like maybe strongmen kind of did something like. I know, M- to that I know point. MMA guys got a popular. Yeah. It was MMA that got a popular it, because okay. they were doing that for, you know, shoulder stamina or whatever. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then everybody was like, oh, I got to do this because uh, it looks cool. I mean, it, it definitely exploded during our career, like our, our, right. our era, right? Like, I mean, yeah. it, there, it was not popular the first five years I was a trainer. Like, nobody, nobody was doing it. I remember when we first started, like, foam rolling and stability balls were just hitting the scene. Like, yeah. so that was a big deal was stability balls and foam rolling. It wasn't until, you know, maybe f- eight years later or so did people start using battle ropes, and then it got really trendy for a while there. Probably, Still is, I think. I probably bought the most tools out of the group, I'm sure. Like, I had Olympic rings. I was probably the first to have Olympic rings. Like, I would bring it into Gold's gym and, like, hang it off of, um, you know, the squat rack or whatever, and... and Nobody gave me any shit for a while until that Jerry guy he saw me doing that and was just like freaking out. Even though it's bolted down, it's like I'm the not, owner of the, not going anywhere. Yeah, Jerry McCall is he yeah. own the, all the golds? Yeah, yeah this, this is before like two CrossFit it was even a thing. So like they they somebody like some movement. I think it was I don't know when CrossFit really got popular, but before that there was this gym in like Nevada that was like it was all about like. Um, super like old school like stuff. I, I I got really into that, like everything that was old. So that's what got me into kettlebells, and that's what got me into like thinking about unconventional tools. Um, I think the the useless one out of the group that I bought, um, that actually is in the closet, I think. But it's it, it's like the era of suspension trainers. So I mean, I liked TRX just because of the simplicity of the design and like the way that they had everything sort of organized. But, um, you know, you get a lot of these knockoff ones that tried to, like, compete with it. And so I bought one that, like, had this this sort of a wheel that would you, – you would put, um, you would put like, a pin in there to stop it from, from having full – Like a pulley or whatever. Yeah, like a full pulley. Like, it would lock it in place. Um, but, yeah, so you'd get, like, super, like, uh, unstable – you know, like I could do rows and, and I would have one arm back, have one, one arm forward. back and one arm would come forward. So it had that like free flowing kind of like uh, ability to anyways, it was like I used it maybe a few times and it was just like the the foot straps in it like were shitty designed and 
like the whole thing was just like gimmicky, you know, like trying to compete with what was already like, uh, you know, a hit. And uh, I think between that and the the jump, like I was really into testing at one point, like because I had athletes and stuff. And so I was like, oh, I need to get a, a vertical jump test. And so I got this like platform, I actually still have it. And I was going to bring it in. I'm like, when the fuck am I going to use this? You know, like <laughs> a vertical jump. It's not the one you jump up and hit the. No, which that one's awesome. Yeah, as I say, that's a cool tool. I wish we had that. This one is just basically it, it measures the ground forces that. Uh, oh, how hard I, you push I produce off? to push off and jump up high, but that's expensive. Yeah, it's expensive, and I I paid for it. I used it maybe like once because I had one client that all they wanted to do is increase their vertical jump. So you know, so I bought this like really expensive piece of shit, <laughs> and I still have it. I'm like never even use it. You've had some jump rope tools I've seen too. You have had some shit. Yeah, jump rope. Oh, oh no, thank you. Uh, the, the jump rope with the, the LED lights, yeah. <laughs> I was trying to reverse engineer, like, you know, what they did with the LEDs. Uh, I knew you had some stupid shit. So w- when you jump, basically like, uh, the revolutions, it, it creates, um, like when the lights are in front of it, some way it was able to show this digital display in front of you. You oh, can see okay. the amount of reps that we were. I remember those time. commercials when they came out. It looked so cool. It was like super cool, but like you can't even see it if the lights are on. <laughs> it only works. <laughs> you know if, I mean? It only works if you jump over the dark, yeah. which is not a good idea. <laughs> and like, yeah, and it's like the handles like are all fucking like too big and. It's just like I just want a regular jump rope. What's what's some of the dumbest equipment you guys used a lot as trainers that now you're like, what the fuck was it? Um, How about the Dyna discs? Uh, Do you Dyna guys discs. use that for everything? <laughs> I did use. Yeah, that, that for people a stand, standing uh, on that shit for everything. I, I did do Dyna disc and foam pass up. But reminds uh, me of like a whoopee cushion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah for everything yeah. though, we're gonna do tricep press downs yeah. on the Dyna. Disc. On the Dyna. We're gonna do curls on what? the Dyna disc. I did. I did a lot of Smith machine work for sure. Oh. Which I still, I mean, I actually use, you know, it's so funny how, because we, for like inverted we rows, talk so it. much shit about the Smith machine that I, I'm self-conscious to use it now. <laughs> so I actually wanted to- You don't to, want to get caught on there. Somebody's going to take well, a picture. So what I was doing, uh, I was actually doing a supinated grip bench press the other day. Hadn't done that in years. And just- uh, Oh, that's for sure. That's fine with a, on a Smith machine. Right. You because, ever do that shit in a free bar? Right. Without a spotter? Yeah. It's a Dude. motherfucker, right? So Dude. so they have, it has its place. That's how you some, lose your teeth. Something like that, right? Yeah. Like so, I, I I felt validated for using it for that. But then I was like nervous. I'm like, this is gonna be the time like some mind pump listener like comes walking up to me. I'm gonna be using the Smith machine and I'm gonna have to like explain myself. Like, yeah. No, listen, this is what I'm doing right now. Like, <laughs> so oh, shit. Uh, yeah, because I used to use it all the time. Now I never do. But I just did the other day, and it was I it was really funny because I did have this moment. Of I was totally self conscious of using it. I thought, oh, how funny is that? That because we've talked so much shit about it on the show, yeah. I I'm afraid to use a machine because someone's going to come over and notice. You could see that, like the the growth of personal training is just it's it's right along li- line with all the growth of these fucking tools that they would sell. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I would get these catalogs when I owned my studio, and it was like all these like little tools that you could use. And I remember looking at half of them and going, because by this point I realized half of it was bullshit. Like, why would I buy any of this stuff? I don't need yeah, any of Yeah, now everything's, like, out of sand or, like, water, you know what I mean? Just yeah. Just, like, variable resistance, and I'm like, I get it, you know? Like, there's, there's, it's just, like, why? You, you got, know? it's because you have to figure out What's how to stu- sell shit. What do yeah. you guys think is the stupidest, most popular tool right now? That's hmm. popular? Popular yeah. wise? Yeah, popular right now. That's, that's be, stupid? That, that's right now, that's really popular. I think the training mask is the dumbest thing. Oh, that, yeah. Oh, dumbest so, you know what? I did more research on the training mask. You know what it You know what it does? It strengthens your diaphragm. So, your ability to suck in air, it actually, it actually it gives you resistance so it can strengthen your diaphragm. Now, is still, that going to benefit? Still stupid. It doesn't... I, <laughs> I was going to well, say, it's, no. it's still, it still would go up there as stupid. Well, so I thought of a potential application for it. All right. Uh, so I'm hear li- me out. I'm listening. Yeah, yeah, so hear me out. So um, when Jessica went to the Paul Check uh, certification, they were talking about muscle recruitment patterns that affect your breathing. So you get a lot of people. So now we talk about how some people have issues getting a full diaphragmatic breath, and you know they always breathe, they shallow breathe or whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, that uh, is a is a recruitment pattern like any other, where if you walk a particular way or if you squat a particular way and you do that all the time, that becomes your default pattern. So te- just simply teaching people how to belly breathe isn't enough. They have to train it because their their default recruitment pattern is 
to not get a full breath. Their diaphragm works in this particular way and it's hard to, to train out of it. And if you don't, um, then people have these signs of stress. Some people feel like they can't breathe or they'll feel like they're out of breath or they yawn a lot. Like a lot of yawning is a sign of not getting uh, full breath because when you yawn, it actually forces you to get this full diaphragmatic breath. A lot of people don't realize that. So I'm think, I was thinking that maybe those masks as a training tool for that where you put the mask on and then you you suck in and focus on really getting a belly breath and then breathing out real hard and just strengthening those well, if recruitment that's, patterns. If that's, I, I haven't tried it, but I'm, that's I'm speculating. A, it, well, if, then I'm going to challenge that theory with that wouldn't be, to me, that would be no different than somebody who has poor recruitment patterns and squatting and then they decide to put a belt on to help that. Not right, that like, it's not that it's helping it, but I feel like it would give because if you have bad if you have a bad pattern of doing that, how would restricting air actually help you? Create so I've never patterns? used one. I've never put one on, but I I I, I, well, I think what it does is it it makes it so you have to breathe in harder because I I did like I said I read studies that show strengthens the di- uh, the diaphragm. So I know you have to suck in harder, right? Because it's restricting well, it's, air. Well, have you ever? Have you ever? So it's like resistance. Have you ever tried to snorkel? Have you snorkeled before? Yeah. Okay, it's like that. Have you had one on before? You tried one? No, I haven't tried a mask on, but I know that's exactly what it's doing. It's it's just like you're sucking, you're blowing, you're being able to breathe through a tube. That's all you get. So, if you've ever breathed through a snorkel, now what you have to do when you go breathe through a snorkel is it, it does force you to calm, like calm your breathing down, or you will like hyperventilate. Yeah. Like you can't <laughs> do that in a snorkel. You have to. You have to take these yeah. slow breaths. So, I mean... I it might be a training tool. I've never used one, so I'm just speculating. But the, for what the pe- for the reason people think they're using it for, yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, exactly. Stupid. Even if that was true, I'd still think it's a ridiculous tool because it's the the carryover to what you're, what you're getting from it. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you... The real benefits. You'd have to be in a, a very specific sport where I could see Yeah, that. we could go down, like, the rabbit hole for a lot of these. Like, even the body blade, I could make, you know, like, <laughs> the relevance out of that as far as, like, right. you know, muscle contraction right. and, you know, consistent uh, muscle tension. And, you know, it's just a matter of, like... On a on a totem pole of priorities, it wouldn't have sold millions if you couldn't argue some science behind it, right? Right. I mean, that's how I always look at it. Like if it, if it, I don't it, know, man. If, Sometimes if, selling millions doesn't mean things. Well, it's like fucking, you could go pick up a rock outside and make a fucking workout out of it. So it's not like it, that actually happened. At one point, they did sell a pet rock. Yeah, that's well, true. That's what I mean, <laughs> like it's like it doesn't matter what it is. Like you can. I think my problem with a lot of like these exercise like pieces of equipment is like if your body's like going through all these movements yourself and you're just kind of carrying this thing with you, you know, what's the relevance if it's not like plate loaded or it's not like a, an actual load of weight that it's just like, right. you know, you, you're, you're doing all these unique movements with it, but why? You know what I've seen lately like, on my, on my feed on YouTube and I think on Instagram too is the fucking mouth trainer. Have you seen this uh-huh. thing? Did you guys see this? Yeah, it's like a. Uh, it's me. That was around before. Oh, I got a fucking stupid one for you guys. Okay, like Shark Tank. <laughs> you know, like um, Lori. I think she backed this one. Like, she, she, it's a piece of plastic that's like basically like a, a U shape that has like two uh, spots for your feet to stand on it, so you kind of balance. And then like you just you go up down like a like a teeter totter. Like up, down, up, down, and you kind of twist left, right, left, right. So you twist your trunk with it, and that's it. And then they make like, and it like five million different like movements out of like nothing. It's, it's, you know what it is? It's if it looks cool or if it looks weird, it'll sell. The shake weight sold so many Mm -hmm. because it looks like someone's jacking off. That's, That's the it. only it was, reason why it sold. It's like a joke. So everybody, it, ah, and it I worked, one. and everybody bought one because it looks like a hand job. Mm-hmm. This mouth trainer one that I'm talking about, it's a thing you put in your mouth. And the commercials for it is like, ah, like someone's <laughs> on it, and people share it because they're like, this is fucking, re-, and everybody's sharing it. Yeah. Meanwhile, it's going viral. Isn't that funny? And I know this motherfucker's selling a bunch of them because of that shit. Because yeah. it looks dumb. We need to come up with some stupid shit. Yeah. Uh, or just a good ju- good way to market it like that. I remember when I told you guys it's yesterday, one or the were, other. Axe Axe did their the uh, balls, the dirty, dirty balls. balls. Yeah. That was the most brilliant oh, yeah, commercial yeah, yeah, ever, yeah, man. It was yeah. so brilliant. Well, with that, check this out. Go to YouTube. Subscribe to our new YouTube channel, Mind Pump TV. There's a new video every single day, 365 days a year. Also, at MindPumpMedia.com, you can enroll yourself in the free 30 days of coaching. Share it with your friends. It's a great way to get lots of information uh, that encompasses all of fitness, health, and wellness. 
and it's absolutely for free. Also, if you'd like to ask us a question that we answer on an episode like this one, the place to do it is Instagram. The place to do it on, or the page to do it on, is Mind Pump Media. I also have a personal page. It's Mind Pump Sal. Justin has one. Mind Pump Justin and Adam has one. It's Mind Pump Adam. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.